We've received quite a bit of interest in my free to be workshop. So to that effect, beneath this video is a link that will give you a description for the workshop. And we've also included a special discount. So if that's something you would be interested in, I would invite you to click that link and I hope that you would find the course to be quite beneficial. I want to share on a personal dimension with you about how I respond inwardly when I talk with individuals who have been laid low by that strongly narcissistic person. And that is, as a therapist, my heart aches because I hear so many stories about you know, how narcissists have robbed that other individual of who they really need to be and they can bring all sorts of dysfunctional patterns and ingredients to the equation. And you're over there, and finally it just hits you over and over and over. Being attached to a narcissist hurts. You're, you're not the best version of who you want to be. You, you wind up having so many ingredients within yourself that you don't like. But the difference between yourself and the narcissist is that you can get to the point of saying, you know what? It's time for me to go on my healing journey. And I, I know that many of you are in that place right now, and I applaud you as strongly as I can. I'm seeking healing. Now, as a result, uh, one of the things that you can do is you can look at some of the patterns that you've been in with that narcissist, and you can begin determining what the better alternatives are going to be. Now, very quickly, what we can say is, for example, you can look at the pattern of codependency that you and the narcissist may have been playing into. And by that, I mean, uh, you play off of one another's emotions and you're uh, reacting in a real erratic way with, uh, uh, with one another. And you can decide as part of your healing, I'm going to become more of an independent thinker. I'm not going to just allow myself just to be merely a raw reactor. Or instead of pleading your case with that narcissist and exchanging insults and getting caught in all of those non-productive arguments, as part of your healing, you can decide assertiveness is going to be a part of my way of life. And not just asserting verbally, but asserting behaviorally and with my priorities. I'm going to go ahead and take a stand and take some initiative to be my own separate self. Or instead of defending yourself constantly when that narcissist comes after you, you know that one of my favorite phrases that I like to use is the phrase calm confidence. You can learn to live with that sense of calm confidence on the inside where you decide my worth and my value is not something that's determined by that narcissistic person. Instead of holding on to bitterness and begrudgment, you can determine that you can have what we call radical acceptance. I accept the fact that this is what it is. I don't like it, but there it is, and I'm going to move forward. That's what I'm talking about when I say that you can dedicate yourself to that sense of healing. And by the way, there are plenty of more adjustments that can be made. Now, as you progress in your healing processes and the narcissist begins to take note, I think you, it's, it's not at all a surprise to say that they're going to have zero excitement on your behalf. The narcissist is going to offer you zero encouragement. Uh, to, to do that healing. They're going to offer zero curiosity. Uh, they, uh, they're not going to want to join you at all, but instead uh, you're going to have to remind yourself that as you go down your healing path and you begin to make uh, changes that are observable, the narcissist is going to interpret you inappropriately <laughs> left and right. And I want, to, I want you to brace yourself. This is kind of a good news, bad news kind of a thing. Um, the, the good news is you can go on that journey. The bad news is you still have that narcissist over there that's going to be whispering in your ear, sometimes shouting right at you. But there are some things that you want to be aware of that uh, is going to ha happen on the inside of the narcissist as you go down your healing path, and you're going to need to make room for it. Now, first and foremost, as the narcissist misinterprets you and they don't respond in an, in an enthusiastic way toward you, you're going to notice that the narcissist is going to take an attitude that uh, can be summarized by that phrase, how dare you? How dare you come up against me? The narcissist, as they see you healing, is going to take the victim's uh, mindset. 
you're rejecting me and you're trying to make my life miserable. And so they interpret you as being disloyal to them. And in a certain sense, that's right. But it, uh, but they, they forget. It's no longer about them. Your healing is about you, but they still want to make it about them. In addition, as the narcissist recognizes that something different is going on inside of you, you're going to receive exaggerated invalidation. Let's keep in mind that narcissists must be in control, and when they see a sense that you're slipping away, they're going to let you know, you don't know what you're talking about, or you know, I don't know where you come up with the crazy ideas that you have right now, or I don't know who you're talking to, but it's all wrong, and so you're going to get a lot of invalidation. And then as you persist and you stay steady with those uh, pattern adjustments that I mentioned just a moment ago, the narcissist is going to come at you with a mindset that can be summarized you must be punished. And they can do all sorts of things to make your life miserable. And that's the bad news part. Uh, as you try to heal, they can, uh, they may uh, withdraw any kind of assistance in terms of making your life or projects go well. Uh, they may play money games with you and mess with you in a big way with that. They may attempt to uh, poison key relationships. They'll do all sorts of things to sabotage you. And, and you, you look back and think, what in the world's going on with these individuals? And the answer is they are what they are. They have such a strong need for uh, control and they're so entitled and self-absorbed. And when you say, well, I don't want to be on that team anymore, they don't know what to do with it. And then their go-to tactic as they in, uh, watch you uh, in your healing process is, they're going to do as, as much of a smear campaign against you as they can get away with. You know, it's the old saying, if they can't control you, then the next thing they'll do is they'll try to control what people think about you. And so they're going to come at you with a strong negative bent, and you'll need to prepare yourself for that. All sorts of venomous pronouncements are going to come into your, uh, in your direction. You know, for example, the, the narcissist can say something like, no one's going to believe in you. I mean, <laughs> let me tell you what some of the things are, are uh, people are saying about you. There's some things that, uh, that I've heard that are not flattering at all. Or they may say venomous things like, well, you know, you're just a phony. Uh, you like to think that you're, uh, you know, this self-righteous kind of person, but you're not. I know the truth about you. Or they may something like, say something like, you always were, you are, you are now, and you always will be a loser. And, uh, I, you know, you may try to think better of yourself, but I really am a whole lot better than you, and that's never going to change. That's the mindset that they bring with them. Or they may go back and start doing some <clears throat> revisionist history with you. They may some, say something like, um, you were dishonest with me from the very start. I know that you were scheming when you were with me. And, of course, there's a lot of projection going on with that one. Or they may say something really harsh, like, I hate you with a passion, and they'll come at you with all sorts of anger and uh, and uh, punishing uh, kind of statements of that nature. You know, I, I hope you fall on your face, or uh, I'm going to be so much better off without you, or you're just damaged goods and you just won't admit it, or uh, uh, no one's going to want to have anything to do with you. I mean, you're going to come with all of it. You're going to hear all of that kind of stuff. That comes with the territory. What you won't hear from the narcissist is, you know, I realize that I played a role in the difficulties that we've had in our relationship. How many times have you heard that one? Or I, I know that I can be a, a, a tough or difficult person to deal with, and I need to, uh, to examine my side of the, of the road on that. You won't hear them say this. Or you won't hear them say, I need to get my act together too. I'd like to make all the efforts that I know you're making. Go get them. So knowing that to be the case, I'm hoping that you can ask yourself certain questions so that you won't give up because what they want to do is they want you to collapse in your healing efforts. But ask yourself now and remind yourself, what does my history with this person uh, tell me? You know, it, this, this person's been difficult and argumentative and sabotaging and dishonest and secret keeper for a long time. Or how many times... Have I struggled due to uh, my own suppression of my needs, trying to appease that person? And remind yourself that that's a bad habit that you've gotten into. Or you want to also ask yourself, you know, I've been angry and tense on so many different occasions. What's that kind of emotion trying to tell me? And listen to yourself. Listen to what your gut has been saying to you for quite some time. And then you're going to have to remind you or ask yourself, am I willing to take some punches to the gut? 
Uh, the narcissist has to win, which means that someone has to be in the loser position, and that's you. Am I willing to pay the price that might result from the smear campaign against me? And I know that that's one of the most difficult things. What, what might my life be like a year from now or five years from now uh, if I do get away from that person, if I don't get away? The narcissist so wants you to disbelieve in yourself. They interpret you in their own self-oriented kind of way. It's all about them. That uh, that, uh, that uh, there's there's simply not going to be a support to you at all. You know, when you go into this healing mode, we we have to kind of use what I refer to as kind of an odd psychological mathematics equation, and that is. You, uh, you add to your quality of life by subtraction, addition via subtraction. And uh, I'm hoping you can decide, you know, I care too much about my own core values. I, I like who I am on the inside and I want to get more and more acquainted with the real authentic me. I need freedom. I need the privilege to choose for myself who I'm going to be. I'm overdue. I've put up with this stuff way too long. No one can take initiative for me except me, I'm ready. Are you at that point? Are, are you at the place where you can say the healing has to begin and I need to go ahead and make it a steady day by day kind of effort and, and you'll be working on it for the rest of your life. And so just uh, remind yourself, this is going to be a, a work in progress. You see, the bottom line is that narcissists are committed to their own dysfunction, or maybe we can say they're imprisoned by their own dysfunction they uh, will not interpret you correctly. They will not encourage your efforts. They will not join you in the maturation process. And so when you look at that, what does that tell you? And what it tells you is you're making a right and very necessary decision. Healing and moving forward, claiming yourself, knowing that they are going to come against you, it's so necessary. I hope you hear my heart and I hope you know that I'm pulling for you and, and uh, there's going to be a certain price that you'll have to pay. But in the end, what you have waiting for you is hopefully the authentic you. Now, I hope the video such as this can give you some good uh, food for thought. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that this can be part of your healing journey as you watch videos such as this. If you've not already hit the subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so. And we'll keep more videos coming in your direction. Watch them on a cumulative basis and you'll see that uh, uh, the mindset begins to, to get stronger and stronger on the inside of you. If you have a need for therapy, and I, I know that many of you have uh, taken me up on this one. Um, you know, I've been sponsored by the people at BetterHelp.com for quite some time. Now it's an online therapy resource. It's accessible. It's affordable. Uh, you, uh, the, we have a link below that will take you to the website. You go through the link, you get a 10% discount on the first month. Uh, and, and these are people that can assist you in your therapeutic endeavors and in your goals. Please seek help if that's something you know that you, know, you could benefit from. In addition, I also have my therapeutic courses. It's like signing up for an online class. Each course has multiple videos, like 25 or more, uh, and each video has written documents, guided questions, and taking you into a certain direction. We have Ready, Set, Connect about how to make good connections. Uh, this is me about uh, establishing your boundaries, free to be finding yourself despite those controllers. Uh, we also have my webinars that have been presented, and they're still available on the website. Uh, we have our podcast. We have many articles on the website. We have my books, lots of resources. Uh, and the reason I'm here, the reason I do this is I want to be a part of the healing journey with you. I so appreciate it allowing you to be on the path with you. Narcissists, when they see you healing, interpret it as rejection. That's, that's part of their dysfunction. Do not get sucked into that. Uh, it's time for you to say, uh, I need to be my own separate person. There can be a certain price to pay, but there's a great uh, benefit that's even better waiting for me on the other side. Because you see, I want to be a person of steadiness. I want to be a person of awesome authenticity. And ultimately, it can allow you to be a person of peace.